Welcome to Auntie K's, your favorite radical queer indigenous auntie, bringing you tarot every day. Hello everyone and welcome to Auntie K's Tarot. Today we are going to take a look at what is newly in, what is on my table, and uh, personal nuances as, <clears throat> as we go through that. Um, as folks know, the Rana George Lenormand is my favorite. And the guidebook that comes with it, um, I, I took in a lot from this. <clears throat> I, uh, found online resources and, uh, but most of my Lenormand learning was, um, uh, on the fly. It was, um, you know, the course of, uh, over 3,000 readings in, uh, two year span. It was learning and practice and I'm an intuitive learner. And so that seemed a natural way to go. So, when I did this guidebook, uh, I, A, <laughs> uh, was fighting a major case of an inferiority complex, an imposter syndrome. And um, B, <clears throat> was afraid that I would just, if I read this before I wrote this, I would just accidentally pair it. So when, when this was in, I ordered myself the Essential Lenormand, Your Guide to Precise and Practical Fortune Telling by Raina George. Um, and I, uh, read through like, you know, the introduction stuff and I was getting into the meanings and I, um, I like the setup where, it talks about meanings under different circumstances. Um, <clears throat> you know, work, love, health, body, spirit, money, uh, time or timing, advice or action, orientation, objects and areas. This is kind of like gender essentialist. Um, so I'm ignoring those parts. And that would be harder if I didn't already feel pretty secure in what I knew or if it was the first thing I'd picked up. Um, <clears throat> and there's uh, these nuance cards. Some cards, is nuance the word she uses? There's some cards that um, she, she notes have like a certain amount of pull, like they'll they'll have a flavor to a reading or an area if they're in play. And I have enjoyed that, but I didn't finish reading this section. I then <clears throat> decided uh, that I'll come back to it. And I wanted to read about how uh, she writes about the uh, Grand Tableau. And... Um, the different thoughts and ideas on reading uh, the Grand Tableau. And this is, um, the ideas and concepts are, are laid out really well. It's not easy without laying out a whole, <clears throat> a whole diagram. Um, it's not easy without laying out a whole diagram to describe a Grand Tableau. And I do really like how this was done. And I really like her concept. And what I really like <clears throat> the most is that Raina George talks about, you know, over her decades, <laughs> decades of learning, um, she, she developed like her own techniques and, you know, encourages you to like, not to flip flop. You can add in, bring in, you know, add flavor but like not to flip flop, know, know what things mean to you. And I 
appreciate that and am really reading that this with that in mind and like how uh the concepts in here can work with and enhance how um i read the grand tableau and the reality is is that you develop techniques based on what you need i i appreciate the heavy fortune telling predictive aspect of this uh that's why i love lenormand um and um so i really i do appreciate that but also like one of my flavors as somebody who does mostly love readings is um you know how i read certain cards and what they mean to me and that i often they often overlap with work and <laughs> they also uh you know uh, often my calls like after we talk about a bunch of r romance stuff we'll talk about work or there'll be a work question but really in the end they want to talk about romance and so <clears throat> it's flavored what i need out of uh, my cards. I definitely don't read the dog as romance. I read it as a friend. And if it's in play in an intimate situation or desire for intimacy, then I w would read that as like friends with benefits is uh, something quite plausible to that situation, right? That's something they'd be open to. Um, let's find what I'm looking for because I drift when I'm talking. Okay, so that impacts how I read the birds and <clears throat> the garden. In uh, work spread, which I read in this section of the Grand Tableau, with a size whip, birds, dog, tower, garden, book, letter, gentleman, these are my co-workers. And um, this is going to be, <clears throat> this is mostly going to be meetings, but this could be as well. Um but this is also, you know, the, the meal you have during your work day or the coffee breaks you have and um, having coffee beforehand when it's um, in a setting where like you're choosing who you work, who you're socializing with in those times. It's, it's really about <clears throat> that aspect, the relationships. And then this is the co-workers. Um, and um because i need that definition but when i'm looking at a relationship this is the date <clears throat> that is uh romantic and this is uh a casual um relationship me because i need those definitions and <laughs> they can be i i know what the other meanings are um, and I can use them, but those are the things I need a lot. And so they become a very definite way of, um, using them. And, and so they take on a strong meaning in that way for me. Um, I chose the vultures because, uh, a group of vultures is a committee of vultures. <laughs> Um, but yeah, all the other things that people are seeing in these vultures, uh, a hundred percent. So when I first saw the Estrella Tarot, I was like, yes, I want it. I can't afford it. I can afford it. And it's gone. <coughs> and so I found, um, the Diverse Marseille on, uh, make playing cards and I adore this color palette they're similar but not quite the same so this color palette I like slightly more and so I, I loved it and was really happy with it and uh, it was still pricey <clears throat> coming from make playing cards and their shipping but um, you know this <clears throat> this was over a hundred uh, Canadian. So, um, you know, I was like, well, is there much difference between this deck and this deck? And I watched reviews and I wasn't sure. It came out in linen and I love linen. Um, 
This deck is way more diverse. Um, I didn't do a count, but <clears throat> um, the first thing I do isn't look for a specific card. I look through the majors and the courts, including with an RWS, <laughs> uh, because they're the most important people cards. And so I want to see what the uh, diversity ratio is in the majors. And, and I knew instantly it was really high in this deck, and so I didn't even bother counting. It, I, I could tell right away, you know, on a good estimate, it's at least three quarters <clears throat> BIPOC. And, you know, um, and I know that folks have showed this deck, you know, and folks have showed this deck. I, I showed this deck pretty early on, obviously, because... Because I like it, right? But, like, you also show this deck. <laughs> and they all get a nod for their diversity. <laughs> and, um, and so then when I'm dropping a whole lot of money, I'm like, well, what do they mean by diverse? <laughs> And, and I can get really hesitant. Um, and um, <clears throat> so I had the money and I chickened out and bought this one and then was really disappointed. And I was like, buy what you freaking want, Krista, because <laughs> you just save your money in the long run. So, um, again, I really, their color palettes are almost the same, but the diverse must say, like, it just hits the tones that I love the most with precision, but, <clears throat> and it's still pretty diverse. It's, I, I'm, it is, but this is better. <laughs> um, the art is so fun to me. It's awkward like a Marseille, but better. <laughs> uh, and it's modern. And the colors <clears throat> are really fun. And I have really diverse reads with it. And <laughs> it's so fantastic. Um, and... So I'm really happy with it. Um, I'm really happy with it. I also got this. And I didn't really research <clears throat> what this deck, what this book was. I saw the title. I checked the author. So, I've had a rule for 10, no, I don't know, probably, probably like 20 years, at least at this point, of, um, that I buy predominantly, especially brand new, BIPOC authors. Um, and, uh... I, I will buy by or white I will buy white authors but more often secondhand and I I keep track of what else I've bought because I I keep it at my collection is about 90 percent books by <clears throat> by puck authors so uh title uh you you fit my uh, purchasing requirements from books. And, um, so that's how far I looked into it. Um, and I love this. I love this. It's like, so they did this poetry as spell casting started as like, <clears throat> you know, a, a group of people coming together and, uh, and then it got moved to online in 2020, which was like the third time they're doing it. And it was, you know, a group of BIPOC folks getting together, um, talking about poetry and spell casting and um, 
you know, workshopping it and and acting upon it and uh then they went to zoom in 2020 and uh then it was suggested that they put it into a book and <sighs> so those sorts of <clears throat> community gatherings people getting together having these sorts of discussions and and brainstorming and workshopping um all together uh with leftist concepts like that's something that, that was when i lived in an urban setting that was uh that was my social life that was my downtime my happy spaces so <clears throat> i am a loving this book so what's on my table well obviously um the Estrella <coughs> Marseille is on my table, and the other Marseille is Marseille Prendre V. And um, in my excitement for using it, I, we're having about 25 cent or twenty five percent equal play between <coughs> these four decks this week, um, and this has been the excitement of. Uh, you know, my guidebook, the Rena George guide, essential guide, um, in utilizing thoughts and ideas and, um, in enjoying this deck and <clears throat> loving my own. When, sometimes when there's like multiple relationship situations going on, like, Somebody's got a, a secondary relationship going on. Well, usually the person calling me is the person who's in the secondary relationship. I'll pull a nine card box for both relationships. Um, and, um, and, and so doing that with two Marseille decks is really fun. And uh, then, you know, really thinking all through the multiple uh, techniques I'm utilizing in Lenormand, uh, this. And, um, also on my table, uh, the, uh, the food tarot has been my oracle this week. Um, there's other decks on my table, but, um, this is what I used all week. Um, all week. This is, this is what I use. Oh, I did, I did choose two of these, <coughs> uh, my fortune cookies. So, there are other decks on my table, but this is what got used. Is this even all visible? <laughs> this is what got used. Uh, so the back row of my table uh, this week that didn't get... Oh, no, I lied. <clears throat> I used the Clarity Tarot in uh, work reading because um, I had so many cards thrown on the table from different relationships i grabbed this and uh did a work reading a lot <clears throat> i did use that this week the background really quickly was rustic roots uh vivid kingdom uh reconciliation truth decks and I brought out, um, I brought out my fortune queens. And while I used fortune queens, um, for myself, um, in, in like one draw pulls, um, I didn't actually end up using it on the hotlines. But, um, so I, uh, pulled to find out how long I was waiting for different items in the mail. Uh, and I, I just pulled one card and, um, I worked with hours, um, because like they were all close to arrival. So obviously I was working, uh, with hours and should a higher, um, you know, anyway, should a higher trump came up, then there we go. But it was fun. Um, I was right within like, um, you know, 30 minutes either side. 
of um so like you know within a one hour time frame i was accurate um and so that was fun uh, it was fun for my kid although he wanted me to redraw uh and then he wanted me to draw on how long it would take to download uh his video game on his nintendo switch but it's like there's too many variables in that like you know a delivery truck you know the mail trucks are driving right um but download speeds <clears throat> that's weather other people using you know all those things affect it so it's like it's there's way more variables i'd these are one card pulls i'd need to see the variables so anyway uh he was still impressed with me even though i wouldn't estimate <laughs> download speeds for him so this this was my uh week in tarot um this was my week <laughs> um both you know reading on the hotlines and um i guess uh delving into uh I increasing knowledge and uh thoughts and understandings and in both uh work and enjoyable ways so this uh <clears throat> this was really nice it was a good week on the hot lights oh crazy thing in personal reads right <clears throat> i was using this deck for um <laughs> was using my own deck for how well you know my work on the hot lights go and i do usually use like um Marseille or playing cards for that. I do. But I was like, I'm using my Lenny. And um so I have a couple alternate cards, right? And one of them is Seance. And I find this card really useful. Hang on. I find this card uh, really useful for um, a lot of relationship readings, right? Um, it, depending on how it's positioned and the cards around it, it can give some nuance to relationship readings. But <clears throat> when it came up in work reading that, you know was positive i don't remember entirely i don't remember what the other thing was but i was like hmm, there is a third card a mystery card <laughs> um i was like you know the the week has like increasing finances things look good um returning clients i'm like is there a slump but like it will be small and i'll have a good recovery um, I was like, or, um, you know, is it, there going to be lots of messages? Is there going to be a lot of quick calls? Um, <clears throat> like, I am like, this really threw me off because I was like spirit messages or like, you know, is it, <laughs> is it going to be dead? Um, it did turn out to be spirit messages, but I still had the same doubt the second day. And I was like, I'm not going to use it. I'm going to pull with um, Marseille. And then I was like, just for funsies, uh, let's have some confirmation. But I will use <coughs> the Rana George, where the coffin really, it, it just means the coffin. And <laughs> uh, so the coffin didn't come up. <coughs> um, I should have looked this up. I think there was something more nuanced because I looked back and I was like, you know, just trust the spirit messages. It might have been the clover. I don't remember. Um, you know, my instincts said that, but like, um, <coughs> fears, scarcity fears was like, ah, oh, is it going to be like good? a dip and then like a quick recovery at the end or made up of a lot of quick calls 
Like, what, what's the deal? What's the deal? <clears throat> so, fuck capitalism. I hate you. Speaking of which, you can get <laughs> the Brown Wish Lenny and the Marseille Prondra V with the links in the description box. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah. So, you know what else I want to talk about? I talked about my buying practice in books, right? Um, and I've, with Dex, <clears throat> my goal is to um, bring that same ethics by buying diverse decks. But if you buy BIPOC authors, the majority of the time you get a diverse deck. Not all the time. Sometimes it's kind of mediocre or less. Um, and, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, it's, and sometimes, sometimes it's cringy. Sometimes people sell their own cultures and it's cringe. Sometimes they do it really respectfully and it's beautiful. Um, <laughs> so uh, I've, it made me think about it. You know, getting these two books and uh, in this deck and getting this deck because I should have just bought this deck instead of the Metanoia um, in the first place um, made me think about my shopping practices um, and how sometimes <coughs> that if you're going to pull the trigger on the price of something I really want, it can end up costing me more. Um, when it's still what I actually want. Um, and, and it made me think about this, like, is that, is this something <clears throat> I need to think about? You know, um, I don't know. Um, and, you know, in, um, it definitely in, in books to do with like cards it is harder to buy um to find it's harder to find the BIPOC authors um so even though my buying of books overall is at 90 percent I think that section of my buying is probably where it's most unbalanced and yet you know, I went with the Rana George <clears throat> be, be because um, BIPOC creator. And I adore this deck and largely the point of view that um, things are written from. <clears throat> so I, I will comment on it and uh, see where I'm at to use it. Those are my thoughts with a lot of pauses that hopefully I edit out for all of you folks and uh, that was my week i'll talk to you later